and let's record now. Brilliant, now right. everybody. Perfect. In that case then, let's see here. So this is for the discussion of woman as other. Let me make that a little bit bigger. There we go, okay. This one says, I'll read the excerpt from uh, The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. I'm probably saying that wrong and we've already read that. Then it says, then find a YouTube clip of a movie trailer that you think relates to this reading. Um, when you are finished, record a group discussion, talk about the following. In what way are women either constructed as the other or not constructed as the other? How are they outside or inside what is considered normal for a given society? Um, how are they seen as representing that society uh, or, sorry, how are they seen as representing that society or not representing it or being foreign to it? And how do your examples from your movie clips relate to the reading? Uh, make sure you look at quotes from the reading and details from the clips that support your answers. And then it says, uh, yeah, then I, I would do the writing on there. But anyways. Okay. So what were your thoughts on this, Jax, when you, you read that? Well, you know, I look back in, yeah, it says 1949 the era um, really depicts what was uh, the view of women at that time and how in our dispensation it has evolved with the church and also um, the influence of um, you know our church leadership with Relief Society. So I was looking along those sort of lines and also in our own societies and our own communities of interest. So um, back in 1949 in New Zealand, the British colony was coming into New Zealand. And so um, our culture was slowly uh, being um, overrun with, with um, with the British Empire coming into New Zealand. Mm. But from a cultural context for being Māori, um, we have beautiful Māori values for our women. And so we up, uphold them um, and they're respected. And I felt reading this, as like, oh my gosh, it's so backwards, we've moved um, as a people and as a society. And for us as a culture, it's in contrast that in this reading, I felt, you know, feminism, we're, we're second class citizens. And now in this reading, uh, the second sex around Simone, De, De Bo, I couldn't even say her surname, Dover, Bovur. I thought yeah. Bovur. You're, yeah, Bovur. You, you said it was close as I ever thought. Yeah. Uh, The theory of you know women uh, being the other opposite you know totally removed and second and oh she's part of man but uh, not equal to mm. uh, the um, metaphor and you seen referring to Jews and Negroes as you know the, the lower tier that they were measuring women to be at that, oh, you're at that level, you're not at this level as man. Um, and I felt that was quite, you know, quite very, uh, yes, it was obvious when the British came in that this was the position of women. In New Zealand, we were the first in the world to have women vote. Uh, so um, women's suffrage with voting and making women equal pay. Uh, so there's lots of um, back in that era to this era, to where we are. And also when we add the other line of with the church position and women and with uh, sisters in the gospel, that we have a, a role that's balanced with the whānau concept or the family concept of eternal families. And we do recognize that we do come of come of man. 
but um, and a divine with our heavenly fathers um, direction in terms of our creation and our roles to procreate into this world. You know, so these the heavenly father started putting this in place for us. But when I come back to the reading, I uh, wanted to pick up there was something there. Oh, okay. You're referring to um, comparing us so, uh, biologically, social sciences, you know, just giving some very, at that time, I would say limited knowledge and based on our, our, our characteristics and uh, on science or class or classes of, of different communities. Uh, from a, a Western point of view, yeah. If I put my cultural lens on, we didn't view women, we had roles and responsibilities uh, and uh, within tribes, uh, but women were upheld because we, the mana of the wahine, the strength of the woman, and what we do is the procreator and the nurturer and the, you know, and, males being the protector and the provider. So it's just been, we have different uh, views in that sense. Mm. Now, but yeah, he's, she's also making reference that she didn't want to deny the Jews that women, Jews and Negroes that women existed. Um, I thought that but this denial does not represent a liberation for those concerned, but rather a flight from reality. I say, oh my gosh, very close-minded back in that time. Mm. I agree. Just very, very grateful. Made me very, very grateful not to have been born in that time, in that era. <laughs> and that there was no respect for women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless you were um, born in a class, but even then, within classes, there were realms that a woman was not allowed to be engaged in. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I too, am glad to be kind of born in this this era, this this dispensation as well, to kind of mm. see that not only are things better for the the, the Negro myself, or and also for women, but also. Um, yeah, as I say, that there are a lot more opportunities than this woman could probably even even dream of to mm -hmm. see such difference on there. I was talking with my wife as we read this together because I wanted her viewpoint on this as well. And one of her first thoughts is the same as you. As I read, read through this, I was like, this, this just sounds old. It sounds like this is back. And I, I made mention in my um, part of that assignment where we, we wrote our thoughts about it and everything about what what side we defended and I made immediate kind of a point out of this is made over 70 years ago yeah it is a while I think the exact number of years is 72 but still I mean that is that is at least a single generation and that is it's it's not a lot of time in perspective of the grand scheme of things but so much has happened and I think that it's it's really good how far we've come, but it's still not perfect. Uh, I know that there's it's way better than what it was in in a time that where she saw and looked around and saw the the depth of inequality. But I think that there is still work to be done. That there's still uh, some equalizing to do. I don't know how it needs to be happen. I, I don't, I couldn't dream of that road, but I do see that there is still inequality that exists. But yeah. It's true. And I know her question is, you know, what, what is a woman? She's questioning herself if she's not been valued or appreciated and um, her contribution to life and society has not even been recognized, has been diminished. 
and he, it's sad even though in seven, like 72 years that mindset is still alive and kicking in some very diverse communities or countries and that's what's sad uh, even though we have moved uh, the, the, the world has moved as the need has uh, grown and women have become liberated and endorsed and supported. So my parents were in the era of the change of guard. So my dad was very much a liberal man to say, you know, we have equal roles in our home. The, the boys learn the girls' jobs and the girls learn the boys. There was no like, oh, the girls just stay in the house and the boys stay outside. We, we were a, a family that was taught to work um, equally, yeah, from a large family. And, and my mum, my mum had a very strong um, opinion in terms of her role, and also influenced under relief society, which was um, being led from a spiritual context in the Fano, in the family. So uh, I guess my parents were in the change of era, um, and allowing women to step forward, work not just be homemakers and stay at home and born the babies, but to go out and work too and be educated in a sense. So yes, coming back to her question, she's um, validating and questioning herself and her existence. And then she's wanting to define herself. And um, and she's seeking for truth. She's seeking for understanding. Mm. And she's saying, well, if I can question myself as a woman, uh, well, what is a man? <laughs> mm. Who is he and what does he do? Yeah. Is it just a piece of paper that legalizes um, two sexes? And, you know, this is happening now in our, our dispensation. The same question exists when people are questioning their own individual sexuality, yeah, or having dual or LGBT. And, you know, there's all these acronyms now. Um, I just heard an interesting one. Oh, sorry, I didn't write it down. But this, this uh, gentleman identified himself as, uh, he was relating himself to be an emotional it's a terminology and I didn't write it down, sad. Uh, and he related his individual sexual identification to his emotions. Mm. So I thought, well, that's interesting. He didn't want to say he was male or female. He said, mm. um, I'm, an, I'm, I'm an emotional being. <laughs> well, wow. I've never seen that before or heard of that before. Yeah. No, so he was relating to himself or his genealogy was all around emotions connecting to happy people, sad people, you know, for, oh, which is, you know, how people are just now taking a little bit and just removing it and say, that's what, that's what I want to be. I don't want to be all of this. I find that interesting in this society, what people are choosing, uh, experts out of it or experts out of it. But I love like the family proclamation as a connection to uh, verify what our role is and when I and as women and um, also sisters in the gospel when I was trying to look because it said look for a video clip mm -hmm. you go on you go on you know it's sad when you go into Facebook or and you just see umptings and umptings of I find quite misleading perception of what women are and what your role is, our role has been, um, um, what they see as equal, yeah. mm. and uh, the worldly view on what equal is, versus the spiritual view within, within the church. Mm. And I believe there is balance in all things, especially within the church. It teaches us um, the plan of salvation. Mm. We have we as the sisters in the gospel, the priesthood, uplift us in our own, and we uplift the priesthood, 
and the role that we have together and our duties as sisters in the gospel. So uh, I noticed in her writing, she doesn't speak too much around any spirituality. Uh, too much. I would no. say she mentions it here and there, but she never dives into it. No. So I, I then thought to myself, well, how deep has she in her religion or she's just on the peripheral she's a peripheral person quite quite not solid there yet um but she is making some forms of connections mm -hmm. she's at least considering it yes i understand um, that yeah when she's talking about genesis where eve is depicted was made of a base called supernumerary bone of adam Mm. No, so that's about as close as what she's relating. Um, what's your thoughts? Yeah, video clip. You just get so many. Um, oh, the video clip that I found? Is that what you're saying, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I chose the same movie that I talked about on there, and I chose the video clip of Wonder Woman. Yeah. I was gonna say it's it was a really good um oh sorry. Sorry. Yeah, my phone. Um it was uh a good clip and, and I thought of um just the, the overall movie, but I do like the uh, the clip used in the preview as well. But I I love that movie because it's it goes from this uh this woman who is has you know obviously her special powers that not not to focus on that necessarily uh but to go into uh how she reacts to this entire culture of the world that she has never seen of before and, and never even really heard of mm. at or imagine this but um when she fits into this she doesn't take flack really she doesn't take a uh, um really anyone's attitude she she does what she believes is right and i think mm. that's that's really admirable as that as well. But I love that this is it's masked by comedy. Um, a lot of the things that happen on there, but yeah. it's really interesting to see the dismissal because this is it's it's based well very loosely since it's a superhero movie, but it's based off of what society was like back then. And this is, I believe, World War One. Yes, um, but the interesting thing about it on there was the fact of um, how she went into that society and how she was treated uh, instantly. Um, how there was just a, a lack of respect everywhere and not really so much that. And she was an amazing icon to anyone around her or anyone who knew her at that time. But mm -hmm. it was still very interesting to see that it was reflected so, I mean, what my bias self would say accurately how she was treated and everything. She was just disregarded and just uh, kind of uh, swept away or not really taken seriously by almost anyone. But yeah. Anyways, those are just some of my thoughts from my, my clip of my uh, YouTube thing or movie preview. Yes, well, I saw this um, interesting clip of... Um this entertainer um, interviewing young people in a mixed age group um, and mixed cultures. And he had, um, he was in this particular question, he was asking, do, is it appropriate that a woman pay for dinner? Oh. And, and I thought this is, this is along the lines of and um, so he said, he gave an example that he sent this woman, potential date, um, a text. And he said, um, she said, she suggested, should we go out for dinner? And he comes back and he goes, um, oh, yeah, uh, I would like to go out to dinner on this date, which was probably not what she was asking. She's probably meaning that night. And then mm -hmm. he goes, <clears throat> he gave her a date a week out because it falls on the day that I have money. 
she mm. doesn't respond. He doesn't hear from her again. And so he came back and he was asking the group, <clears throat> um, why do, what, um, did he offend her by suggesting that um, he would put it out because he would have funds for the dinner? Because she named a restaurant that she would like to go. And he said it was quite high end. It's not like he, he said he couldn't afford it. But anyway, in the long story short, he was asking the group, was, is it appropriate that I should have, did I assume that she couldn't afford or maybe we should have gone 50-50 and gone to the night? You know, he was just trying to see, has he overstepped his boundaries as a male by assuming that he should be paying for it? And he didn't mind doing that, but it was just more affordable on another night. Mm -hmm. And so they put it out there. And it was very interesting from the women that just said, well, maybe you should have asked her first, instead of assuming that it was all on you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. women actually like to contribute. And then, so it was really mixed discussion around that where the, where the guys were going, no, no, I want to pay. It's what I'm supposed to do. And, and then the women are like, ah, actually, no, it's, it's about both of us, especially when she suggested the restaurant. Mm -hmm. she's, she's indicating, I'm, I'm interested in this. Uh, I'm keen to go there. You know? So it was just really about, and it came back down to communication um, for our era around getting clarification where in that era, there was clearly little room for women to mm -hmm. step out of her role or her position of not being equal and um, like I say treated like second class citizens and in fact she's referring them to lower class people and she's identifying Jews and Negroes which which mm -hmm. is saying you know in slavery or to me depicting at that lower level mm. but it's interesting she didn't re refer to her own lower class of her western society she didn't identify them because there is uh, within western society too mm -hmm. yeah so it was a quite an interesting little uh, um video clip there and, and then when your eyes watch more you see a lot more more and more examples occurring in this day day and age around um like I say, it still exists in certain areas and communities. Mm -hmm. um, and how it's relatable now. I'm very fortunate in this country um, that we have opportunities, women, to have equal rights and equal pay. Um, more women leadership. Our, minister, our prime minister is a woman. You know, so we've got some really... Um, great examples where women have been able to break break the barriers down and step forward. We still have disparity in wages. Um, men will get paid at least 10 to 20k more than a woman who has the same role. Who has equal role, but she's also a mummy. You know, <laughs> she's doing all the roles um, a lot more than the men. Yeah. I was going to say, so then to answer the uh, question on there, and I, I love the uh, video clip on there, I, I feel like I've seen something similar to that. Um, let's see here. Then let's uh, answer those uh, questions that on there. So in what way are women either constructed as the other or not constructed as the other? Would we say that more collectively in this day and age that women are constructed as the other still? I'm going to acknowledge it that it is, still exists. Mm -hmm. Like we say, it's in a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is not perfect yet. Come a long way, but it's not done. Not done. Yeah. Okay. In that case, then, so we, we agree that then it's uh, women are, are still constructed as the other, at least in, in some ways. And then let's see here. So, how are they outside uh, what is considered normal for a given society? just decided to notify me of three things how are they outside yeah so the 
the thing says, how are they outside or inside? What is considered normal for a given society? So in this case, then, would we flip that and to say that they are considered inside what is considered normal for a given society? I know that uh, uh, Bivio, uh, Simone de Bivio, was um, under the influence of that women were considered uh, the other, they, they weren't considered normal. Uh, what was normal was a man, and then they were just uh, something else on there. And I think it was not Aristotle, but shoot, it was really early, and it was one of those uh, first three paragraphs where it said that uh, there was some philosopher who said that a woman is an imperfect man. And that was, of course, anciently on there. But in this day and age, would we say that women are considered inside or, or outside what is considered normal for a given society? Uh, I believe the world is trying to be inside rather than out. Mm. And then they sit on the border. Yeah, mm. it's on the border and it crosses over. And that's why it becomes the individual's choice rather than society's choice. It becomes an individual choice where they position themselves. Mm. And that is more empowering. So I can choose if I want to be a feminist or I'm going to go and be liberated or I'm going on either side as a woman. Mm. Well, that's the power of choice rather than society deeming where you should be and what your place in society is. I don't understand know what that. your thoughts. I, I agree. I think that that it, it is more inside of uh what's constructed as a normal for a given society. But at the same time, it, there's a lot more of that nowadays that, that it is and can be outside because of the freedom of choice that everyone is giving themselves to, to choose or decide, uh, things like that, uh, what your, your sex is or your gender is. I feel like that is something that kind of becomes a choice to be outside. Yes, and it's the coming out, coming out, identifying where are you and who are you, and that maybe it's and that becomes very liberating for the individual because they've made a choice and they've been able to express that choice where they position themselves, and um, that's why I say it's uh, still we're working through uh, what society deem is appropriate and compared to what the individual matter of choice is. Mm. and how it influences those around in the different communities. Yeah. How they're all popping up and coming out of what who they are and what they are. When they, um, so he, she, so we have certain roles uh, culturally that women can do or can't do depending on the area that you live in. So a woman cannot stand on the marae and speak for the tribe. Yeah, it's it'll be your our male, yeah, our and in our family it's our priesthood leaders would stand, and and empower our men to stand and speak for us. Our woman will stand up beside them when they finish speaking, and we would sing and we would totoko, but we would support him by singing a supportive song to what he has mm. said. So we have certain roles and responsibilities. And but when we come on the marae, or which is our main meeting house, the women, we we do the karanga calling for them to come through, and then we will connect. What am I saying there and sharing this is because now in this age, women can stand up and speak in certain areas. It's in my tribal area. We have a, a female lead. Uh, ancestor Tupuna. So our mm -hmm. tribe has always been very fe feminine so that she can stand and all our tribe can stand, male or female. Other mm -hmm. tribes is more predominantly male. Yeah. So it's because of our ancestor, our Tupuna, that enables us. Uh, and that was very unique for our tribe. And then they would know if I go into another tribal area and I stood and speak, they knew exactly what tribe I belonged to because I did what my ancestor did. Okay. Mm. Uh, men can now karanga, men ca can call, 
as as the group is moving into to the meeting house. So mm. roles have evolved as tech, as cultural tikang protocols has evolved in a modern age, but still respectful. That's still amazing. Respectful. And that's like that. that's been um, something a big learning for all of us within our own cultures. So did we cover off our questions there? Let me see if we gathered all of them. Let's see here. So I just wanted to share that with you. It is Thank evolving. you, by the way. I do like that. It is evolving, you know. But oh, oh my goodness, I'm so grateful I'm not in her era. Wouldn't want to go back in time. That's that's scary. Okay, there's one thing that we haven't fu uh, fully done yet. I think this is our last one. Um, and it is um how are they seen as representing that society or not representing it or being foreign to it i think that i'll just mention on that quickly um so we talked about how uh um being woman is considered inside but as we talked about like there's there's still that area of choice to kind of be inside or outside of what's uh, given as normal for a, a society, but how they represent that society. As far as I see, even just using the lens of pop culture, I see that that women are represented as strong individuals and they represent themselves as their own people, I guess. In, in arrogance of freedom, I would say, is kind of like a, so the representation I, I see is that of uh, freedom and independence, really, majority. Yeah, it's, it's like a pendulum. It swings from one end to the other, isn't it? It's just from one extreme to another. And they actually haven't quite found, I'd say, balance. Um, depends on the world's view. And when I watch video clips and I see young girls, um, well, flaunting uh, their appearance as a way to attract the eye, you know. And yet we are endowed with certain body parts that are different from the men. It's about how we actually still maintain that respect of our body and its purpose and its role. And I just, that's why I say it's, um, we can have an inward uh, mindset on women or we can have in, in feminism or an outward mindset of feminism and that's why I say it's just fine you've got to continually find that balance but there is dual there's dual there are dual roles and responsibilities and um, like for myself I joined the army I was told it was for, for men only, not for women. So, you know, um, I was a very challenged young girl. I said, no, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> I'll let, I'll let the, the system tell me if I can handle the gender or, or, or not. And if not, I would challenge myself. But see, even the army, a disciplined service, which is usually traditionally front, men front line. Now, in, especially in America and New Zealand, across the world, women are joining the forces. Women are in the police force. Women are frontlining, putting their bodies on the front line um, as it has evolved and uh, changed over time. If I answer the question, I'm not going off. Yeah, I think so beautifully. I was going to say, even even with your own experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always relate. I, I find it's important to relate that. Uh, but for my brothers, I mean, I have, multi, I have five brothers and five sisters. So each one is individually different. And uh, very grateful that our parents brought us up to enable us to respect each other's roles and responsibilities. But collectively, when we come together, it, it is a strength. Mm. Mm. And yeah. Just teaching our, our men and the priesthood in our home to respect the woman, mm -hmm. respect the sisters. I completely agree as well.
So I'm just jotting down notes so I can better um, understand and write this on here. Okay, that's so good. But I think you're right. And I think that we have gone through all those uh, questions on there. So sadly on there, I, I, we never got John, but uh, is is it okay if I ask you to, to send a message then to the group um, a after we uh, complete this about like, hey, just send us your thoughts. And I'll try to include them in that that reading on there. Yes, and I do want to make note too. So, um, somewhere in the report that they were maybe when you email it to um, had issues with the online. Yeah, and that we've just had to try and reschedule a few times. Mm -hmm. See, Vice President. Okay. Beautiful. All righty. Well, I'll make those notes on there and I will hopefully get this done today. I've got a few other big things, so I'll okay. I don't know which one.